Okay, measures of center. I'm hoping that regardless of who you had in term one and two, but whoever you had in year nine is more important. Are you aware of the three measures of center? Have you heard of mean before? Have you heard of median before? Shh. Can you stop talking? I'm trying to record here and it's picking you up really strongly now. Have you heard of mode before? Yes. Good. So you've heard of them, but can you tell me, can you tell me why we need the measures of center? What's the purpose of them other than because your teacher told you? Yes? Yeah, but why is that useful? Why is it useful for me to know the average when I could just, just like we did last lesson, isn't that better to know all of your heights? What's the problem there? What, it, let's imagine that I collected all of these heights of you versus, and I got another table, all of the heights of a different class. Would I immediately be able to tell you which class was taller? Why? You're shaking your head. You're right. Why? Sorry? Yeah, no, I'm talking about this table. If I had this table and another table with a whole bunch of numbers between 150 and 200, am I just immediately going to be able to tell you class two was taller? Is we could if you were looking at it. Because like, if, like, the average of all of them were, like, but see, are you like, 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 see how she jumps to the average? She's not saying, oh, you could just tell by comparing 179 to 160 in the other class. But that's just dependent on the order of this. Would it make sense for me to go class one was taller than class two because class one had 179 and class two had 160? That's just because we wrote it in that order. The point of a measure of center is, so that's the example that we were going over. We can't just list the heights in name order and compare the first, second, third students in each. We need a number that exemplifies or represents the whole group in one number. I can't compare 20 numbers to another 20 num You can see that. I can't compare 20 numbers to 20 numbers. Can I compare one number to another number? Can I, can I say that the average of 165 is smaller than the average of 180? One number versus another makes sense. 20 numbers versus another 20 numbers doesn't make any sense. So that is the purpose of a measure of center. We can compare one number to another number. So this is where the notes would start that I'd like you to get down. The mean. The mean of a data set is the mathematical center of the data set. How do we find the mean? Add all the dump data numbers together and then you divide by how many there were. Get that formula down, please. You'll be using it. Shh. Only talk if you've got something to add here. And if you're going to talk with your chest talk here, so that I can record it, and show your parents if you're wasting my time. This formula, sorry, this formula is probably where the teaching stopped in year nine and year eight. But in year 10, we have to talk about the why. Positives and negatives of this. So why do scientists and mathematicians like the mean as your measure of center? It's because we use all the data in the calculation of the mean. If I'm adding up all of the data values, is every bit of data being involved in that? Yeah. Yes, it's part of it. Meaning you're not ignoring any of the data. The problem with the mean is it's heavily affected by outliers. So can you get those two points about why we use the mean? And I'll give you an example for what I mean by being affected by outliers. So EG, one, two, three, six. Mean 
would be if I wanted to find the mean of 1, 2, 3, and 6, what would my first step be? What would I do with those four numbers? Add them together. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 6 is 12. 12 divided by how many numbers did I just use? 4. So the mean is 3. So 3 is sort of in the middle of where these numbers sit. But I want to demonstrate to you that the mean is heavily affected by outliers. If I did 1, 2, 3, if I wanted a number that was an outlier, very different from the data, give me, someone give me a number that would be an outlier. 256, that's significantly different. What's the mean going to be? Mean would be... So it's, two, it's going to be 6 plus 256. It's going to be 262 over 4. What's that going to be? 24, 6, 65.5. See how, see how these... Um, numbers here aren't that much different only one of the numbers is different you've got 256 there did the mean change a lot though yeah. it went from 3 to bringing 65.5 so that's to show you that the mean is heavily affected by outliers can you make sure that you have that first rectangle about the mean give you a minute start talking about the median so it was surprising to me that um, my ignites told me they didn't have a formula for the median they told me that their previous teacher had told them how do I find the median put the numbers in order oh no that's not in order that's in order now <laughs> all right and then they said that their teacher told them you count on either side back into the middle so You'd circle that, 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 so five is the median. That works. That works when you've got seven numbers. But what if I asked you to find the median of 50, 50 numbers? That would take too long, and that would also introduce the option of stuffing it up and making a mistake. So, yes? I thought that wasn't like a middle uh, even. Uh, I'll get to that, but just so that you know, okay, if we're doing it this old school way, um, let's make an even set of numbers, three, five, six, nine. So I like that you're contrasting that. If you went either side, so circle, 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 there is a median. It's just not one of the numbers. The median is halfway between three and five, which would be four, Okay. I'm going to give you a rule for that anyway, along with my formula. So let's talk about the median now. The median of a data set is the positional center. What did I say the mean was? The mathematical center. The median is the positional center of the data if the data is in numerical order. So from small to large. For now, can you write down this rule about the the formula for finding the median, but right now it probably won't make that much sense to you. It looks very complicated, but when it's demonstrated, it's not too bad. <coughs> so rules with the median, the, num the data has to be in number order. For a data set with n data values in it, the median is the number in the n plus 1 over 2th position in numerical order. 
That's crazy right now. That doesn't make sense, maybe. But I'll show you. And then this will, this rule here, the star, this is the explanation for how you handle the even numbers like you were asking about. If n, if the number of data is even, the position of the median is going to be between two numbers. It was between 3 and 5. In this case, the median is the average of those two numbers. So what's the average of 3 and 5? 3 plus 5 is 8. Divided by 2, the median is going to be 4. But the median isn't one of the numbers. Yeah. Whereas here, is the median one of the numbers here? Yeah. The median is 5, because 5 is in the middle. All right, I want to show how that formula works on these two examples because I believe that doing this visually like that, you trust me that five is, is five in the middle of those numbers? Yeah. It's the positional middle. But I want to show you the, how that formula works. So if I look at this, what is N? How many numbers are there in one, two, three, five, six, nine, and 12? Seven. Sorry? Seven. Seven, yeah. And I've given you this formula here. The median is the number in the n plus 1 over 2 earth position in numerical order. So you just told me n was 7. So 7 plus 1 over 2 earth position. So what is 7 plus 1? 8 over 2 earth position. What is 8 over 2? 4. Fourth position. Is 5... In the fourth position, yes. there. So therefore, therefore, five is the median. So you're probably telling me, what's the use of this formula? You could have just done it like that. Well, didn't I tell you, wouldn't, would you be able to do this with a hundred numbers? Yeah. With a formula? You could, but it would take a free a long time. Okay? But if you had a hundred numbers here, and you used my formula, a hundred plus 1 over 2 if you'd be able to tell me where to look to find the median, see? You still them all out in well, if, if there were heaps of numbers, wouldn't they be written out in your book or your test? Yep. So you could just find it. You could just count along. You don't have to waste your time rewriting. Because there's no working out there. You just need to look along and find the position that it's sitting in. Does that make sense or not? So what's the... What's the hurdle? Your you're saying that if there was heaps of numbers and you're finding the meaning, you still had to write them out. This formula doesn't tell you what the median is. It tells you where it is in line. See how it, this tells you the median is the fourth number. So we went across and said the fourth number is 5. Question? If you go to the value of all the numbers there, mm. would you not be able to just like, divide it by two? No, because um, I like what you're thinking, but that's the mean is what you're talking about. Yeah, if you've got like... First of all, I know there's 101 numbers, right? Yeah. I just divide by 2 and I don't know. That's what this formula is telling you to do. Well, we need a formula for that. Huh? If we know that, I think the other thing is for when you don't know. No, everyone thinks logically like you. That's why these guys haven't come back from ASMA. They need, you need a rule. You need a rule for it, yeah? Does that make sense? Like, that makes sense to you. It doesn't necessarily make sense to everyone. That's why I need to have it written down. Can I show you with the even number option? So what is N for these numbers here? How many numbers are there? One, two, three, five, six, nine. Six. six. 
Use the formula. 6 plus 1 over 2 earth. What is 6 plus 1? 7 over 2 earth. Is 7 over 2 a nice number? No, it's 3.5. But what is that saying? 3.5 is between what? Um, yes, that's what, that's what the formula tells you. So that tells you the position of the median is the 3.5th number, which is halfway between the third and the fourth. Well, it's not both because then you use this. If n is even, the position of the median is between two numbers. In this case, the median is the average of the two numbers. And I just showed you how to find the average, it's the mean. So what is the average of 3 and 5? 3 plus 5 is 8. And how many numbers did I just add together? So 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the median here is going to be 4 because it's halfway between 3 and 5. So 3.5, therefore, median is 4. You could write in brackets average of 3 and all right, can you get those explanations down, please? And then I'll go over the positives and negatives of our, um, the median. The mode is very short, so not much notes to go. I can actually, I can quickly go over positives. Why do we like the median? It's not affected by outliers. So I'm going to do this again. One, two, three, six. One, two, three, six. And one, two, three, 256. Those numbers that our student over there gave us. How many numbers are there? Four. The median is going to be in the 2.5th position, which is between two and three. So what's the median going to be here? 2.5. 2.5. Is there an outlier in this data? Is 256 an outlier? Yeah. What's the median still going to be? 2.5. Still exactly 2.5. So was the median affected in any way by that outlier? That's why the median is useful. Because if you have a bunch of data that's mostly together and you have one giant number that's going to stuff everything up, people will tend to use the median. You guys, younger people these days don't really look at the news or house prices. But usually house prices are expressed in median, not average. Can someone explain why? Why do you think it would be useful to have, to give you the sense of what Brighton's house prices are using the median and not the average? Think about it. Is Brighton a coastal town? Yeah. What are the house prices going to be on the water? Yeah? They're trying to give you the mid price of what you're Yes, to give a better idea because, that, heck, we could go in Aberfall. Like, do a lot of you live here in this area? Do you, I, I'm just asking you in general, okay? You know, the, the pricier houses are up in the hilly part as you go up the hill. But that's not going to give you an, a good idea of how Aberfall Park is in general if you average it out. Because what's the average affected by? Outliers. Expensive houses are freaking outliers, okay? What's the negative... The, neg the median only involves the data in the centre of the data set, so it ignores all the other ones. That's why it wasn't affected by the outlier, because calculating the median completely ignored 256. We didn't involve 256 in the maths in any way. Okay? And you get those points down about the positives and negatives. Trust me, the mode is very short. Shh. Can you leave it until after? We're almost done. I just do the mode really quickly. The mode of a data set is simply the most common data value. There is no formula for the mode. The mode is the highest frequency of data value. There's no formula, just look. Which is the most commonly occurring number in the data set? So e.g. 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 6, 9. What's the mode of that set of data? Which number occurred the most time? Three. Do you need a formula for that? No. That's why I said, just look. 
What's a positive about it? It's easy to find. What's a negative? The mode is not meaningful compared to the mean or the median. I'll stop the recording so you